Good evening, campers. I spent fifteen pound on Piranesi, and I want my money back. Why is this hype? Why on earth is this hype? People were happy that they waited sixteen years to read this. Are you kidding me? Oh my lord! Get out! Oh my. Gosh. If you clicked on this video, you know what Piranesi is about, because everyone will tell you. It's about a man called Piranesi who is stuck in a labyrinthine place covered in statues. It floods, he always survives the floods, and there's this other man who he knows called the Other, who is wanting to do some experiments with him. The novel's told through his journal entries where he writes what happened on the X day of the Y month of the year the Albatross came to the Southwestern Hall. I tell you now, if I have to read that sentence one more time, there's also some bones in Piranesi does offerings, rituals. It's it's quite a spiritual book about, it doesn't really matter like what you're worshipping, but there, there's something that you should worship. That's what Piranesi is about. Now, Piranesi is not Piranesi. At the beginning, the other goes, your name's Piranesi, and Piranesi's like, I don't think my name's Piranesi. Fun fact, it's not Piranesi. Piranesi was an old dude. He was Italian. He drew paintings of labyrinths. <laughs> Done. Now, you might think that's really impressive that I knew that before going in, but it doesn't matter because that's told you in the novel. Piranesi is a gullible, naive, but jovial character. Anything that kind of happens to him or what he sees, he kind of just takes for granted and looks for the positives and the, the optimism in everything. That's fine. As a, as a characterization, he's, he's to the T. He is that character and there's nothing wrong with that. The issue is, as a reader, I knew what was going to happen way before Piranesi knew. And the annoying thing is, is that because it's all done through journal entries, there's no point that any of the information relayed isn't something Piranesi could have put the dots together. You know what? Like, stop, Susanna Clark. How dare you give me a character who relates everything through journal entries and can't even deduce what he's bloody written down. You can't even be like, oh, you know, he's only naive because he doesn't know half the story because, you know, some of it's told through other people. No, it's literally Piranesi writing his own story and not being able to make bloody sense of what he's written down. What? What absolute monstrosity is that? What do you mean? What do you mean? Are you kidding me? You're telling me this guy can remember chalk that he's rubbed out, but can't remember the storyline? Joke me. Joke me. The common phrase is like he's a step behind. Pyrrhus is a whole marathon behind. You're like, how can you not tell? <laughs> What you also come across in other reviews is that this is a book about books. Now, books about books are good if you know what the books that they're on about. And I know I'm I'm I don't think I know every book that Susanna Clark is talking about to you. But this information is before the book starts, so don't get aggro with me. Do you know where the quotes are? Oh look, it's C. S. Lewis, the magician's nephew. Bear with people. This is just this, and I haven't seen a retelling of Narnia before, so I quite like that point. But the other is the magician. It's Mr. Tumnus, people! It's Mr. Tumnus! If you've not read The Magician's Nephew, please do. It's fantastic. I recently reread it for my daughter the other day. It's brilliant. Now, what you're interested for is where is this related to this? The magician brings back the witch from The Lion Witch of the Wardrobe, into our world. And through a chain of events, we are taken to Narnia before Narnia was created. This is what's going on within Piranesi. There is a labyrinthine element to the house that he is in. And the more he explores, the more that he finds. But there's one place where it's complete dark. And the fact of going into that hall scares Piranesi. Let me read you something here. In the darkness, something was happening at last. A voice had begun to sing. It was very far away and Diggory 
found it hard to decide for what direction it was coming. Sometimes it needed to come from all directions at once. It's Narnia, people! Ugh. One of the biggest issues I have with contemporary novels is hype. But oh my god, is this hype? You watch people's reviews and they go, I'm not going to spoil the ending. Like, how can you spoil this? Are you kidding me? Like, no one's like, like, Susanna Clark, you took the rug from under my feet. No, she shifted the rug like 50 pages ago when Piranesi told me what was happening. I know there's such thing as slow burn, but come on, you can't have boiled the kettle, then be surprised when you stick your hand on it that it was hot. Like, come on. My issue with this is that it's so well explained and clearly set out that the only person who's surprised is Piranesi. A Piranesi, he's, he's thick. <laughs> it, there isn't a moment I was like, wow, didn't see that coming. Even like the bad guy at the end, you're like, oh, the person who's like clearly the bad guy. Or he's the bad guy. <sighs> wow. I don't really know what to say about this novel because I don't want it to come across like I'm like, well, I'm so clever. Like a big boy in over 9,000 IQ going on in my head. Because what's happening is that it's all clearly explained and set out. It's as if Susanna Clark put lots of different food on a long table. And I've cut them in and gone, huh, it's a buffet. A Piranesi's like halfway through eating going, wait, it's a, it's a free-for-all buffet. What are you guys, have you seen this yet? And everyone's like, but Piranesi, you've just been eating at the table. Like there's paper plates, there's cups. It has buffet written on. It's the 50th buffet anniversary of the Buffet Society of Buffet Dan. This was £15 and it's going in the Testaments Club, a 2 out of 10. If anyone wants this book, just let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to them. I, I don't want it.